Let's continue our discussion on stoichiometry. Get out your science notebook. Here's the essential question. How do we use molar masses as conversion factors in stoichiometry? Well, let's review what we've talked about so far with stoichiometry and mole ratios. Here's an example problem. Let's say we had 18.5 graham cracker squares and we had plenty of marshmallows and chocolate pieces. How many s'mores could we make from that? Well, if we follow along with stoichiometry, we have a certain amount in our recipe up here, and we wanna know how much of another thing we're gonna get from that. This is a classical stoichiometry conversion factor, conversion process. So let's start with what we have, 18.5 moles of graham cracker. Remember, moles just represent quantities. If we take that 18.5 moles of graham cracker squares and we multiply it by a conversion factor in this format, our conversion factor here is the mole ratio, two graham cracker squares to one s'more. Notice we put moles of graham cracker squares on the bottom of this conversion process, and that's so we can cancel out graham crackers in this algebraic problem. Now, if we take 18.5 moles of graham crackers and times it by this ratio one to two, or one divided by two, we're gonna get our answer, which is 9.25 moles, or 9.25 quantities of s'mores. Now, we probably know that s'mores come in whole quantities. We wouldn't have 0.25 of a s'more, so we would round this down to about nine whole s'mores. The key idea behind this is stoichiometry relates to the quantities of any two substances in a chemical reaction, and we can use mole ratios to do that. But let's go a little bit deeper. What exactly is a mole? Well, I'm gonna relate a mole to a few other units that you're probably a little bit more familiar with. When I say one dozen, your brain probably automatically thinks of 12 things. That could be 12 eggs, but it doesn't have to be. It could be a lot of other things. What about one pair? Well, we know a pair of shoes is equal to two. Well, so is a pair of pants or a pair of scissors. One pair typically equals two things. Well, what about a mole? Well, you're not probably familiar with this, but a chemist is. One mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23 things, or in other words, 602 sextillion things. A mole is just a standard unit, a metric unit, that represents a chemical package or a quantity of any substance. This number, by the way, has a name. It's called Avogadro's number. Now, moles are useful in stoichiometry, but counting a mole is not very practical. In fact, it's impossible for a chemi chemist to count 602 sextillion things. Therefore, typically we use masses when working with quantities of material, especially when working with large quantities. So how much does a mole weigh? Well, it kind of depends on the material. Here's two mole quantities of different substances. Now we can generally write a conversion factor, a molar mass is equal to one mole. And I'm emphasizing the word conversion factor because we're gonna be using these as conversion factors to convert from one thing to another. So a molar mass, how do we determine the molar mass of any particular substance? Well, it's equal to the sum of all the periodic table masses of each element in whatever substance we're looking at. So in our previous example, lithium, if we look on the periodic table, lithium has an atomic mass of 6.941. Well, the cool thing we can do with this is if we change this to just be grams, that's how much we would need to weigh to get one mole of lithium. So one mole of lithium is just equal to 6.94 grams of lithium. How about carbon dioxide? Well, carbon dioxide is made of one carbon and two oxygens. If we add up all the atomic masses on the periodic table, that's how much we would need to weigh in grams to have one mole. So carbon dioxide is equal to is 40.01 gram, 40 grams for every mole. So how do we use this? Let's use this in an example problem. How many moles are 15.6 grams of copper two nitrate? Well, to, in order to figure this out, we need some important information. We need to know how much one mole of copper two nitrate is. To do that, we need to know its molar masses. So we're gonna add up all the masses of each element from the periodic table in this formula. There's one copper, there's two nitrogens, and there are six oxygens according to this chemical equation. So if we add up all of these masses that we find on the periodic table for each of the individual elements and multiply it by how many there are, 
we're going to determine that one mole of copper two nitrate is equal to 188.57 grams. This is going to help us use in our conversion. We know that our conversion process looks something like this. So let's use our starting measurement, 15.6 grams of copper two nitrate. Now our conversion factor is what we determined using the periodic table. One mole is equal to 188.57 grams. Notice I put the grams on the bottom because I want them to cancel out with the grams of our starting measurement. Now, if I take this and plug it into a calculator that looks something like this, I'm gonna end up with my answer. 0 0.0827 moles of copper two nitrate is equivalent to 15.6 grams of copper two nitrate. Well, this leads us back to stoichiometry. Stoichiometry uses both molar masses and mole ratios in this process. This is the general path that we use in stoichiometry. Now note, A here and B represent different chemical substances. Because remember, stoichiometry just compares two substances in a chemical reaction equation. So if we follow along, if we start with a grams of a certain substance, we can use the molar mass of that substance to convert to moles of that substance. Then what we would do is we would take our answer in moles of that substance and we can multiply it by a mole ratio to determine how many moles of a different substance there is in a chemical reaction equation. Finally, we would take our answer in moles of that substance and we would multiply it by the molar mass of our new substance to determine how many grams of that new substance there is. I know this is a lot of work and it might seem a little confusing, but let's apply it to an example problem and hopefully it will demystify what we just talked about. Here's our example problem. How many grams of iron three chloride must be added to allow 8.1 grams of magnesium to react? This is a stoichiometry problem because we're trying to compare two substances in a chemical reaction. Specifically, we're going from grams of one substance, A, to grams of a different substance, B. As it says in the problem, we have grams of magnesium and we wanna figure out how many grams of iron three chloride we need to react with it. So let's start with what we have. We have 8.1 grams of magnesium. And in our first step, we need to convert grams of one substance to moles of that same substance. So let's use the molar mass to do so. Down here in the lower left-hand corner, I'm gonna write some important information. First off, we need the molar, the molar mass of magnesium. We know that one mole of magnesium is equal to 24.31 grams of magnesium from the periodic table. So I'm gonna plug that into my conversion process here, making sure that grams of magnesium is put on the bottom. So if I take this and plug this into my calculator, I'm gonna determine how many moles of magnesium I have. Now my next step, I need to go from moles of magnesium and I need to figure out how many moles of iron three chloride or a different substance I have. To do that, I need to use the mole ratio. So looking into my important information section, I know that the mole ratio is a three magnesium to two iron three chloride ratio. That's a conversion factor and the mole ratio I need to convert from one substance to a different substance. So I plug that in there like this, making sure to use moles of magnesium on the bottom so my units cancel out. I'm gonna end up with how many moles of iron three chloride I need from this process. Well, I need to do one more step. I'm gonna take that moles of iron three chloride and I need to convert it to grams of iron three chloride. To do that, I need to use the molar mass of iron three chloride. So I need to figure out how much one mole of iron three chloride is. So I know if I add up all of the masses of iron and all three chlorines together, I'm gonna to end up with how many, how, much, how many grams it takes to have one mole of iron three chloride. Notice I plugged it in this way, making sure to put one mole opposite of what I'm starting off with. If I multiply this on my calculator, I'm gonna end up with my answer, 36.03 grams of iron three chloride. That's how many grams of iron three chloride I'm gonna need in order to react all of my magnesium. All right, I have a practice problem for you. See if you can pause this video and figure it out. Now notice I put some important information down here that might be useful to you. There's a lot of information, not all of it's useful, but what you do need is down there. Did you pause the video and figure it out? I sure hope so. This is the process that I would take in order to find the answer. I first need to know what I'm going from and to. 
I'm trying to figure out how many moles I need from this problem, and I'm starting with a certain number of grams. So in my stoichiometry process, I'm actually not doing the whole thing. I'm starting with grams of A, and I'm trying to figure out how many moles of B I need. I, mean, I don't even need to go to grams of B. To do that, let's take start with what we have. We have 128 grams of aluminum. That's my substance A. I need to first convert grams of aluminum to moles of aluminum, so I use the molar mass to do so. Now I'm going to look down here in my important information. The molar mass of aluminum is 26.9 grams per every mole. So I'm going to plug that into my formula like this, making sure to put grams on the bottom and moles on the top. By plugging this in the calculator, this is the answer I'm going to get in moles of aluminum. But that's not my final answer. We're trying to figure out how many moles of iron we're going to produce. So I'm going to use what I have for my previous problem, and I'm going to continue on. I'm going to take 4.76 moles of aluminum, and I need to convert it to moles of iron. To do that, I need a ratio. I need a ratio of aluminum to iron, and the ratio is two aluminums to every three irons. So I'm going to use this mole ratio in my problem, making sure to put aluminum or moles of aluminum on the bottom because I want those units to cancel out. So if I take 4.76 moles of aluminum and I times by the ratio of 3 over 2, I'm going to get my answer, which is 7.13 moles of iron. Now some of you might have gone an extra step, and that's okay. A bonus question might ask, how many grams of iron is this? How many grams of iron are we going to get? Well, this is just one more step. We're going to take our moles of iron, and we need to multiply it by the mole ratio of iron. I'm sorry, the molar mass of iron, not the mole ratio. The molar mass of iron is 55.85 grams per every mole. So this is the setup I'm going to use. And that's going to give me another answer, which is 398 grams of iron. So if I wanted to use a, if I wanted to use up all my 128 grams of aluminum, I would end up with 7.13 moles of iron or 398 grams of iron in the end. That's the end of our notes. Good luck.